Hello and welcome to my channel. Here I review new movies and television shows and release a new review every day from Monday to Friday. Today I want to do a mid-season review of The Bad Batch Season 2. It was created and written by Dave Filoni and Jennifer Corbett and is based on the universe created by George Lucas. It stars D. Bradley Baker as The Bad Batch and Michelle Ong as their ward Omega. So far there's directorial work from Stuart Lee, Nathaniel Villanueva, and Saul Ruiz, with Brad Rao supervising each of the episodes. This review is going to be based on the first nine episodes of the second season. Just as a reminder, season one of The Bad Batch left off with the destruction of Kamino and Clone Force 99 just barely escaping the city. Season two picks up with a gang on a mission to a tropical beach infested with giant crabs. The gang partakes in some hijinks during their escape before making it back to Sid. Sid introduces a pirate named Fee and a new job for the gang. The opening episode, Spoils of War, and its follow-up, Ruins of War, set the stage for the second season. The first season was about the Empire immediately after Order 66 and cutting ties with all things related to the Republic. The second is about the damage the Empire is causing as it changes from a fledgling empire that still has seeds of democracy in it to a full-fledged authoritarian state run by Palpatine. Like in the first season, the main story is told subtly through the background of the season while the individual episodes focus on different adventures that the four space stads take Omega on. We see them hunt for treasure, run into a Wookiee Jedi, and save Sid by competing in a pod race. For them, the main focus of the season is trying to make money, and each adventure is a new job. Crosshair, Rex, and Senator Chuchi also get an episode each that helps flesh out the overall story and paint a better picture of the Empire's cruelty. This season does a good job of building on the characters that it created in Season 1. So far, Tech, Crosshair, and Echo each have an episode where they feature as the prominent member, and they really get to show off their strengths. Hunter and Wrecker haven't gotten their moments to shine yet, but given how things are going, I imagine they will. Omega has become a little bit more competent, and now resembles a junior soldier. Like the others, she can now defend herself with her bow, and her studies are paying off when it comes to technical knowledge she can share with the others. As the main character of the show, she gets the most screen time of any of them, and we get a lot of different lessons from her interacting with the space dads. Omega is quite upset about the destruction of Kamino and seems to be holding on even tighter to her family than ever. This season has a lot of themes around adapting and becoming independent. Overall, the story for this season has been all over the place, and it wasn't easy to pin down exactly what they were getting at. We see all the different worlds the Empire has destroyed in the changeover, and we get to hear the stories of the survivors as the gang plods on, but nothing is there to tie it all together. The closest this season gets is a loose thread related to Vice Admiral Rampart. A character that isn't all that interesting is just another cliché trope of Star Wars. He's just like all the other Imperial officers that the franchise has introduced in years of late. Dishonest, cowardly, selfish, and callous to an extreme. They make some good speeches here and there, but they always go down without much of a fight. Over the course of the season, we see the fallout from his destruction of Kamino and a rippling effect that takes place throughout the greater universe. Unfortunately, the gang doesn't seem aware of it or interested in taking part in anything beyond their current adventuring gig. The only tie-in into the main storyline that the gang has is a background storyline that happens with Echo. He's been wanting to take a more active role in the fight against the Empire since Season 1, and now more than ever he's ready to help. Through him, we can see the gang linked into the main fight, but it's a loose connection at best. The show really doesn't focus on this part of his personality. The cast does an amazing job. They're living in these characters and bringing all their emotions to life. Especially D. Bradley Baker, who voices all five of Clone Force 99 and the regular clone troopers that appear throughout the show. He gives each of them a unique voice to go with their personality and then tells vivid stories through them. The show's animation is on par with last season, which is to say that it is lovely to look at. At times, you forget it's an animation with how much detail they put into the worlds they visit and only the cartoonish design of the characters reminds you. The battle sequences are energetic and fun. There are lots of cool explosions, great fights, daring escapes, a pod race, and even a scene of giant bugs feasting upon Trandoshan slavers. The show is kid-friendly, so there isn't any blood, and they never show any of the gore. They also shy away from on-screen deaths. It does make me laugh a little when every time they're fighting clone troopers, they use stun guns, but during the battle with the Trandoshans, or any time they're flying, they instantly switch to lethal rounds and don't think twice about it. Like, yeah, we're going to go to extreme lengths not to hurt these clones on the ground, but that clone pilot? We're blowing him out of the sky! I'm sure he'll survive the fiery crash. Behind the visuals and the voice acting is a fantastic soundtrack that would make John Williams proud. Each moment of the season is scored by an orchestral backing. They know exactly the right sound for each instant, and it leads to some amazing moments where the visuals, the voice acting, and the soundtrack come together to create a meteoric impact. I love listening to the music and how it follows every little story beat. The one gripe I have with it is that at times it's mixed improperly with the dialogue. 
It's too loud and competes with the voice actors for prominence. It only happens a few times, but it's super annoying when it does. In conclusion, I'm really enjoying season 2 of The Bad Batch so far, and I can't wait to see what they do with the rest of it. I do find that the story is a little scatterbrained, and the villain isn't great, but I think that they've done a good job fleshing out the universe and building on what they started. The visuals are still top notch, and the soundtrack is magical. 8 out of 10.